Today on Ham Radio q and I'll buy the cheapest 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery I could find. How's it work for me? Well, you're going to have to keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, lithium iron phosphate batteries have really taken the market by storm, and with good reason. Uh, they have a long shelf life, high power capacity, and deliver a more consistent voltage than many other types of batteries available. Plus, they weigh considerably less than a comparable lead acid battery. This technology is ideal for ham radio portable operations. So I, I, I really wanted to dip my toes into the lithium iron phosphate category. And I did a bit of searching and I found the cheapest 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that I could find on Amazon. And I'll put a link to that uh, down in the video description below. It's the Talent Cell LF120A1 battery. Talent Cell is a bit of a price leader in the lithium iron phosphate market. I know that their smaller battery packs are quite popular with the QRP crowd. And you know, this larger battery was certainly no disappointment. And with a retail price of around $84, when I purchased it, I was really pleased with this value. So to start off, let's run down uh, the specs of the Talent Cell LF120A1 battery. This battery has uh, lithium iron phosphate LIFE PO4 technology. And it's constructed of eight uh, 32650 cells in a four series and two parallel configuration. So this delivers 12.8 volts nominally and up to 12,000 milliamp hours or 153.6 watt hours of power. Output voltage ranges from about 9 to 15.6 volts with a peak current of 15 amps. It's rechargeable up to 2,000 times and its size and shape is similar to traditional lead acid batteries. Plus it's got binding posts on the top. Just by going through the specs that this battery has, it really hits all of the buttons for me. But how does it perform? My first step in testing the battery was to charge it. While these batteries are shipped with a charge, they're not fully charged. So, you know, you're going to have to put them on a charger to increase their initial performance. The battery does not come with a charger. Um, and you really can't use just any charger. It has to be one that's compatible with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, most of the new smart chargers are compatible. And um, there's plenty of chargers available. Uh, you can get one of the in inexpensive chargers on Amazon that come recommended alongside the um, purchase page for this battery. I went a little different route and I'm using my NOCO uh, Genius Smart Charger that I already have that I use to charge the um, AGM battery in my camping trailer. Uh, the charger has a lithium iron phosphate setting so I didn't need to you know, use anything different. The charger, that particular NOCO Genius Charger delivers about three and a half amps in the bulk charge mode. So, you know, it's gonna charge up the battery real quick. Um, I left it on the charger for a few more hours after it was 100% charged uh, until the um, voltage read about um, three, three, 13 and a half volts. Uh, since these chargers go into a maintenance mode after fully charging the batteries, uh, you can leave them on the charger as um, if you want, but otherwise, you know, once a lithium ion battery is uh, charged, it's going to stay charged for a long time. So I usually just take it off the charger and let it go. My first test was to see how much power I could draw. Now, the battery was rated for a peak current of 15 amps. You know, this should be good enough for a 50 watt rig, but uh, the ASU FT891 pulls up to 22 amps at 100 watts. At 100 watts in single sideband mode, I was able to draw 17.9 amps. Uh, with the with the rig. Now the fully charged battery was able to um, handle that just fine. Um, as I was transmitting, it it dropped down to about a minimum voltage of 12.2 volts. You know during that transmission, and I'm sure that um, if I was using a full duty cycle mode like CW or AM, the battery would would probably struggle for a bit. Uh, but this was still a really good test of its capability. And I, so after that, I left the rig on uh, for the rest of the day uh, to see how long it would last. Uh, the 891's got about a one amp um, power draw in the receive mode. And it lasted for you know, well over nine hours uh, with that uh, one, uh, one amp draw uh, before the battery's voltage dropped below 10 volts. 
So peak current handling is quite good and its standby time was quite excellent. For a more substantial test, I took the battery out into the field. And you may have remembered my recent video on the Parks on the Air activation in northeastern Wisconsin. I used this battery exclusively uh, during the activation, so I got some great real-world experience with it. Uh, for the entire weekend, I had my um, FT891 again uh, set to 50 watts to extend the battery life, and I used um, single sideband the entire time. It um, peak current draw was about 7.9 amps while I was operating. Ran the battery um, for two periods of about three hours total in one day, calling CQ and making contacts the entire time. In the morning session, we, you know, which was quite longer, I, uh, of the of the two sessions during that day, I consumed about 4.78 amps and or 59.5 watt hours of power. Now this is approximately half of the battery's rated capacity. So uh, as I started out with a voltage of 13.35 volts, I ended up with 12.7 uh, volts at the end of the day. As I took a break, I attempted to charge the battery with my solar panel, but there really wasn't enough uh, sun and my 100 watt panel would, could only deliver about 0.7 amp hours of power. Still a couple hours of that was enough to um, you know, top the battery off a bit and um, I ran for another hour in the afternoon making more contacts um, for about a total of 50 contacts that entire day. The next morning I ran the battery for about another hour as I participated on uh, the State Series Races net. Uh, the battery still delivered enough power for the net and um, a couple of transmissions as I checked in and, um, and uh, Passed a little bit of traffic. After that, I broke camp, moved to another park uh, to make some more contacts. By this time, the battery was getting pretty low. Um, started out at about 12.5 volts, and as I uh, transmitted at its minimum voltage, really started to drop. Um, I was able to operate for about 45 minutes or so until the battery got down below 10 volts um, under load, so that's when I decided to call it quits. But remember, this is only a 12 amp hour battery. So I was able to get five solid hours of operation with it um, with my radio set at 50 watts. And I'm gonna estimate about a 50% duty cycle. I was really calling CQ a lot. So the battery got quite a workout. So what's good and bad about uh, the Talent Cell LF120A1? Well, the things I like about the battery are it's compact size and those binding posts on the top. It's lightweight, you know, it's lighter than a, it's, it's like a third the weight of a lead acid battery of comparable size. Uh, lithium iron phosphate technology, it works really well. It's got a long life and it's fast charging. But what are the downsides of this battery? Well, there isn't much of a downside other than, you know, you're gonna need a lithium iron phosphate compatible charger. Uh, if you plan to use solar to charge the battery, you'll want to make sure that your charge controller also has a lithium iron phosphate setting or an LIFEPO setting. Um, most of the new chargers and controllers do have this feature. Another consideration is that while lithium iron phosphate batteries will operate in colder environments, they will not charge if the battery is colder than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Really, for the price of the battery, this is an excellent value. You know, I spent just as much money a few years ago for a U1 size 33 amp hour AGM battery. And uh, this little um, uh, lithium iron phosphate battery delivers uh, consistently just as much power. So if you're in the market for a new battery, the Talencell LF1 A1 is a great battery at a really affordable price. And on my scale of something that you're gonna wanna buy and not, you know, I'm gonna give this one a solid nine. Uh, I did purchase this battery with my own money, so it's something that I really like. So what are your thoughts on the Talent Cell LF120A1 lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, leave your comments below. It's, I'll filter through them, um, answer any questions, keep that conversation going. You know, maybe one of your questions will show up on my next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, you know, do a few things for me. Give me that big thumbs up. 
Uh, you can check out some of the videos recommended alongside here. And also, if you haven't already done so, and you've watched this long, come on, press that subscribe button. It's the best you can do for me. Uh, pressing subscribe and the bell notification will let you know when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.